What is, just for people that don't know, what is the simulation theory and are we living in a simulation? Mm. Great question. So the simulation theory was really conjectured by a British uh, philosopher, or he's actually Swedish, or I believe uh, Nick Bostrom. He conjectured the following. He said, compute is getting so phenomenally powerful in just our recent time horizon. So the notion that Nick and others had proposed is that if this is extrapolated indefinitely into the future, whether or not that can happen is a question about planetary resources, you know, part of the reason Elon wants to go to Mars and I do want to talk to you about Mars in a bit. <clears throat> um, and that uh, that extrapolation leads inexorably to the to the conclusion that compute will be effectively free and it'll be infinite. It'll be completely democratized. It will be completely demonetized. It will be almost, you know, as I said, too cheap to, to, to measure the expense of computing, and it'll be everywhere uh, in just a short amount of time. I mean, remember, the, the phone that we have, uh, the iPad that you're using, these are like, these things would literally be a mythological witchcraft, you know, 80 years ago, and now they're, they're, they're commonplace. And so the, the notion that Nick, Proposed, Boston proposed, is that that trend continues into the future. That basically the capability of those computers would be to be able to model entire planets, entire ecosystems, even cultures, communities, maybe even people themselves. So we, let's take a parallel um, uh, 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 detour for just a bit. You're not seeing me necessarily. You're seeing photons are coming into your retinas, right? Photons are a packets of energy form of light. They travel at the speed of light. They have different wavelengths, the wavelengths we call color. They're going into your uh, cornea, getting bent a little bit. Then they're going to your lens, getting bent more. Then they're going to your retina, and they're getting detected on this, basically, uh, a detector, just like a, a sensor in a camera, which has pixels, except it has trillions of pixels instead of millions of megapixels or you know, a few megapixels. And those are being transduced. Uh, the color gets transduced on, on cells that are called cone cells. The intensity is rod cells. Um, and, and those are getting transduced into electrical impulses that go from the uh, optic nerve right into your brain. And remember, Andrew Huberman told you on the show, the retina is the only part of the human brain that's outside of the cranium. It's outside of the skull. Um, and so it's a part of your brain that's outside. So it transduces it, makes electrical impulses. Those electrical impulses then get conducted like wires conducting electricity. Uh, and then those go into your brain and synapses in your brain and the neural uh, pathways in your brain can reproduce those. Now, you have an Apple Vision Pro, I think I, I saw you with once. Um, so that can you know, kind of simulate. It could make very accurate representation of me, a holographic perhaps, and you would want to reach out and touch me. Now imagine instead of just uh, instead of just the um, just the raw chem uh, the uh, physical electronics of a of a headset Apple Vision Pro, you just inject the electrical signals into the brain. So that's plausible. It's just purely physical material processes. Uh, photons converted to electrons, get con converted to neuron signals, get processed in the brain. And so all you have to do is get that input sensory inputs and you can have a digital retina, a fake retina and you stimulate it, goes into your brain. They're working on that. Same with sound. Sound is even easier to put a little speaker in your ear and you'd hear it. Um, but, uh, so the notion is that we could physically just be disconnected brains in a vat, right? We could just be uh, in, in this vast system, just bunches of brains. Don't ask how they got there. But we're all just receiving stimuli, and we're just being fed. I'm being fed an image of you over there. You're being fed an image of me over here. I don't know why. Nobody knows why this would occur. But the computing power is there. If you think that the Apple Vision Pro, if, if you were alive in 1971, uh, you could not have necessarily predicted the Apple Vision Pro. It was too far advanced from, from what we have, right, from what we had at that point in time. But imagine it just keeps increasing at any rate you like. Eventually, there'll be a point where every bit of information, every atom in the universe, every photon in the universe could theoretically be simulated. Again, I don't know why this is, but it would be indistinguishable from our reality, according to people like Nick Bostrom and others that suggest this is, so, so that our existence is, we are essentially in a simulation. So the notion is that we're all these characters in this literal simulation run on some computing device, some hardware device that we don't necessarily understand at this point. And we're calling that God. Well, that was what I was going to get to. <laughs> uh, so eventually you get to a point where if you could simulate everything, then you would have to ask, there must be some simulator, right? There must be some master simulator. So let's say I'm a simulation. Well, who simulated me? 
And then, oh, who simulated them? And then who simulated them? So that's the recursion. That's infinite regress. Mm -hmm. You can't actually get to a base level of, um, you know, a final simulator. And if you did, it would kind of be like God. Like you're talking about this brain in a jar that's created out of silicon and, and, and oxygen and whatever we're made of, but it's physically created by human beings. What if you can't pay the power bill that week and, um, you know, you have to choose between unplugging your refrigerator or unplugging the brain? Like, is that killing something? You know, like it starts to enter into the realm of ethics and maybe even these concepts of a deity. What I've heard and I find quite plausible is, um, remember I said the the implication of having infinite computing is that you can simulate everything in the universe. Yeah. Uh, but can it simulate itself? So I want to digress into what's called complexity theory. There are two different types of, of difficult things. There's like a complex thing, like building an Airbus 320. It's very complicated, right? You can do it if I give you all the parts, all the instructions, give you the right order, and I keep you energized. If I, like anybody can follow those instructions and make it. The Earth's weather pattern state right now is complex. There's no way that you can actually create that. Like, you would need another planet-sized thing to create that. That's called irreducibly complex. You cannot make it simpler and then build it up from simpler and simpler things. Unlike an Airbus, you can build it up from smaller mm -hmm. and smaller parts. And as long as you follow the recipe, you know, if you follow the recipe for the Simons Observatory, you'll get the Simons Observatory. Mm -hmm. But if you try to simulate, and it may be to simulate the weather, you do need another planet. Like, we need a, another planet just like the Earth, and then we'd introduce carbon dioxide at a certain rate, and we'd see, is it really going to cause it? Like, that's totally impractical, right? Mm -hmm. So the question of these things is, um, is it really a simulation if it's not 100%? Like, you could make a very, very good weather simulation. We do have that. Uh, but but famously, they're only accurate for a few days, right? So, so how do you build up, you know, an accurate simulator? It'd have to be the same. So in other words, do we need, like, another, is there another universe where the simulators are <laughs> that's equally complex to the simulation creation that they made? And then did they stop, like, did they get, are they made of silica? Are they artificial? Are they, so there are proposals that you could detect the presence. It's kind of like you mentioned the Truman Show. Where, how all computers work right now is, is on this binary code, zeros and ones, five volts, zero volts. Um, but, um, and that means that the world is fundamentally discretized. It's broken into little chunks, like the screen on your computer or your iPad. It's pixelated. In space, it would be called voxels, volume elements. Um, and so you can um, you can have in a large number of them, but it's a big difference between a large number and infinity. To really have a continuous, like, like um, temperature is continuous, like you go from zero degrees to 100 degrees and there's every step in between. But in the simulated world, because you couldn't have, you need an infinite number of computer power to simulate just from zero degrees to one degree, not let alone from zero to 100 or every possible combination. So at some level, you'd, be, you'd see if you zoomed in really close on the, on the thermometer, you'd see oh, there's a little jump. So you could detect the presence of the simulator. It's more complicated Actually, it's done using astrophysical sources called gamma ray bursts and other things that are um, that have properties that are uh, seemingly incompatible with there being a simulation at the most distant and therefore earliest moments in the universe. So right now, there's zero evidence for it. Nick Bostrom will tell you, and you should have him on, uh, that that you know that that's basically a cop out, and and there are ways around that that uh, that fail safe mechanism. If you love the Diver CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.